This salt is known as the dinosaur egg, and it's one of the rarest in the world. Only a few families on a small island in the Philippines still make it. It takes eight hours of non-stop cooking to transform seawater brine into this artisanal salt called asin tibuok. In the 1960s, families in Boal traded Asin Tibuok for food and other goods. But the craft nearly disappeared in the late 20th century when younger people started favoring jobs that paid cash. Nesta Manungas and his siblings decided to revive it 13 years ago. But it hasn't been easy. A law bans them from selling the traditional salt in their own country. So, how do you find a new market for an old craft? We travelled to the Philippines to find out how this rare industry is still standing. Coconut husks are what give the salt its distinct taste. Nesta keeps thousands of them soaking in a saltwater pond near his workshop. <laughs> It can take two days to chop the 3,000 coconut husks needed to make one batch of salt. JJ Nograda has been working here for about a year. Nesta and his wife adopted him when he was four years old, after his mother died and his father became ill. I just like my work, even though it's hard, even though it's difficult, but I enjoy it. Mga... The husks dry in the sun for a day. Next, Nesta sets them on fire, starting from the bottom. He learned salt making from his father and grandfather when he was 15 years old. But like many other young people, he left three years later to look for less laborious careers. Today, his team of four does most of the work. The husks burn continuously for a whole week. The pile of ashes left behind is called garsang. Workers break up any large pieces by hand. This is one of the most essential ingredients. Workers cover the rattan filter, called saksak, with a bed of fresh palm leaves to keep it from leaking. They pack the ashes in and spend an hour compressing them with a wooden stick. Then about 1300 gallons of seawater get pumped through the filter. What comes out on the other side is a salty brine called the sick. This step alone can take a day and a half. Nesta patches the stove with a mixture of ashes and water before each use. The frequent high heat often damages it. Then, he balances clay pots called con between metal rods. It can take a whole hour to get it right. But Nesta says that's quick. 
Puro bato ang pansak niya, away kabilya. Pili lang na. Karoon kay madugay, madugay, madi mamawan, usak adlaw. One rock out of place could ruin months of work. Importante kay og dili ma importante dili ma pull ang ihang sulod ba. Kinang lang i-balance gyud niya og dili mga hagsak sa kwan sa kalayo. Kay um mahagsak sa kalayo di wala nang kapuslanan, hagsak tanan. Nesta's family left the trade in 1983 after their workshop was destroyed in a typhoon. In 2010, his brother Chris convinced him to restart their business to save the tradition. Since then, other family members have also joined the trade. Like his cousin, Josephine Sumingit, one of the few potters in town who makes the clay pots. She learned how when she was 18 years old. <laughs> Tanaman kanang kaang, oh kaang, o kanang kalan kalan bangga tu anak sa lungag lungagan, oh mau naya awang kuan pag kuan nak karon sa asen, jan mau nasi ahonge. Back at the workshop, the team prepares the fire with mahogany wood and coconut fronds. Nesta has strict rules in place before any cooking begins. Everyone needs to remove jewelry or watches and refrain from eating oily foods. These are based on superstitions passed down for generations. Finally, it's time to start cooking. And it's all hands on deck. Jojo tends to the fire, while two others pour brine into the pots. They continue to fill them as the water evaporates. The process can take all day, ending when each pot is filled with salt crystals. These ladles are made from seashells since they are heat resistant and don't contain synthetic chemicals. Temperatures in the workshop can reach up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Popong Poblete has been making salt here since the workshop opened. Today, he handles most of the cooking. Monica Ronzaga, the man may have a walk on the head of me, a gap on the other one. Hey, I told Passaong. So on, the Veronica can not like that. I'll get on that point there, Montagobia and he popong get okay. I'm popong. After eight hours, all the pots are finally full. But the salt won't be ready until they crack at the bottom. They sit to cool overnight. Workers take each pot out of the stove the next morning. Okay, nagdikit man siya, nagdikit man siya, tanggalon niya kaya ron isa isa hon pag hinlo ang iyang kilid kilid o pag kuha ni pag limpio ni kilid po ba? Workers crack open the bottom of the pot to reveal the salt. Coconut husks are the perfect cleaning tool to remove any dust. Most of the people who work with Nesta today had never made salt before, but now say they love the work. Parang ano na rin na pasaya na rin kasi syempre sila lang yung mga taong nakakaalam ng asin tapos parang senior nila yung mga nanalaman nila eh parang masaya din ganun one batch makes 110 eggs they can make up to four batches a month if the weather is good one pot of asin tibuok can last a whole year nesta's sister veronica manunga salupan is in charge of managing and marketing the workshop isa sa Bagay na ina influence ako da sa pagawa ng asin tibok is yung hard work, focus ng trabaho at disiplina. Kasi yun ang pina malas a pinamana ng tatay namin. But selling it has been their biggest hurdle. A national law passed in 1995 requires all salt sold in the Philippines to be iodized. 
Kailangan all Filipino will use iodized salt. As in low, hindi tayo, bawal tayo maglagay sa market ng dahil sa asin low. The asin law was meant to combat malnutrition and prevent goiters, which were often caused by iodine deficiency. But the law devastated small-scale salt producers, who couldn't afford the expensive machinery required to add iodine to their salt. National production dropped from 85% to 7% in 31 years. Nowadays, most of the salt in the Philippines is imported from Australia, China and Mexico. Lawmakers proposed a bill in 2017 that would exempt natural sea salt producers from the ASIN law, but it's still pending approval. Pero, hopefully, i-amenda yung ASIN law. Artisanal salt producers have felt the impacts of similar laws across the world since the 1990s. Nangapura is one of the last farmers making Baolung salt in the seaside village of Kusamba in Bali, Indonesia. She spends her days carrying baskets full of seawater and pouring them on the volcanic sand to filter out the salt. For years, an iodine law similar to the one in the Philippines made it hard for farmers like her to sell salt in stores. Without regular buyers or frequent tourists, Nanga is often left with unsold stock. Salt farmers make so little that most have left the business for better paying jobs at nearby hotels and tourist spots. And even though Nanga has loved this work since she was 15, she doesn't want her children following the same path. <laughs> Nowadays, she sells her salt to a cooperative that adds the iodine. Kusamba salt farmers received a geographical indication certificate from the Indonesian government in early 2022. It recognizes that a product comes from a particular place and has a unique reputation because of it. But Indonesia imports around 2 million tons of cheaper salt every year and the farmers face stiff competition. Farmers sell one kilogram of Balung salt for about $2. That's more than three times the price of mass-produced salt sold in most grocery stores, making it a luxury for the majority of people. Nanga's main customers are tourists who come here to see the traditional methods and often leave with salt. Like Nanga, Nesta also depends on a foreign customer base. Tourists are his main buyers. He also sells some of it online to other countries. Restaurants are also required to use iodized salt, but some have been taking a chance and adding a Sinti Buak to their menu. Chef Jordi Navarra has been buying it from Nesta since 2018. His award-winning restaurant, Doyo Eatery, in the country's capital, Manila, serves contemporary Filipino cuisine. We prioritize using local ingredients uh, and serving up uh, our own versions of Filipino dishes. The salt is the perfect finishing touch to the best-selling dessert, leche flan ice cream. The restaurant's pastry chef, Bettina Taniedo, showed us how to make it. Firstly, we start with melting sugar. We use raw turbinado sugar from Negros in a pan um, until it reaches a hard crack stage. They pour a mixture of egg yolk, sugar and milk on top and steam it for one hour. It's chilled and then churned into ice cream. I don't think the ice cream could be complete without the Sintibuok. I just think they're the perfect pair. 
I've had the chance to visit um, the Asintibok Maker in Bohol uh, together with Chef Jordi. And you get a better appreciation of what these people are doing, um, which is not just basically making salt, but preserving heritage, preserving culture. Nesta and Veronica say it's been difficult finding the next generation of Asintibuok producers. Even their children are hesitant to take over the business. Sana one day, um, uh, ma isip ng anak ko na kailangan lag, uh, bigyan ko ito ng halaga, kasi galing pa sa ninuno namin hanggang sa tatay namin. Weather here has become more unpredictable in recent years. Nesta and Veronica have to watch out for heavy rains and typhoons, which have been hitting the island even during the dry season. In 2021, Super Typhoon Odette ravaged the Philippines, with Bohol being one of the hardest hit areas. The storm destroyed their workshop and they couldn't complete orders for months. Katongi. Naguba nga asina na mo dito nga tumbaging udet na was out man tayo nang dito dito pag mga pagabas. Ay ang salamat sa Panginoon. Maraming mga customer na nakabili sa atin nagpapadala ng 500, nagpapadala ng 1,000 para sa itulong daw sa pagawa ulit. They spent three months rebuilding it and in March 2022, they finally reopened. Despite the challenges, Nesta and Veronica are confident in the team they have now. Blessed naman kami, may dalawa kami mga young one, si JJ at saka si Kim. Tingnan, oh, sila lang, wal, walang namaman, wala ako dito, si Nong Isur, wala, sila lang. Pero alam nyo, ginawa nila yung anong dapat nilang gawin. Other salt makers in Bohol have also started up again. Nesta and Veronica know how difficult the work is, but they believe the legacy of Asinti Buok is worth it. And they're proud to be carrying on the tradition in their ancestors' honor. Sa ngayon, ang saya, ang taba ng puso ko. Dahil, naging emosyonal. <laughs> naging emosyonal ako basta. Ganitong uh, question po. Kasi, Ang naging emosyonal ko kasi alam ko na yung tatay namin, yung lolo namin is happy happy sila ngayon kasi yun ang legacy na iniwan nila sa amin na akala namin eh walang magawa. Na inidaghang mga muara dire nga congratulations nga maayong pagkatrabaho niya ang among mga hasta mga guys ko na mga mundire na nga lamit maayon ni kay wani unda nga pagtrabaho ni asinan. Dako, ko ng pugarbo nga nakakuan may aning gitagaan mig kuan mga 